Baha'i. Gleanings from the Writings of Baha'u'llah. Do not busy yourselves in your own concerns. Let your thoughts be fixed upon that which will rehabilitate the fortunes of mankind and sanctify the hearts and souls of men. This can best be achieved through pure and holy deeds, through a virtuous life, and a goodly behavior. Pages 93, 94. He should be content with little and be freed from all inordinate desire. Page 265. He should not wish for others that which he doth not wish for himself, nor promise that which he doth not fulfill. Page 266. Lay not on any soul a load which ye would not wish to be laid upon you, and desire not for anyone the things ye would not desire for yourselves. This is my best counsel unto you, did ye but observe it. Page 128. Be generous in prosperity and thankful in adversity. Be worthy of the trust of thy neighbor and look upon him with a bright and friendly face. Be a treasure to the poor, an admonisher to the rich, an answerer of the cry of the needy. Page 285. Be unjust to no man and show all meekness to all men. Be as a lamp unto them that walk in darkness, a joy to the sorrowful, a sea for the thirsty, a haven for the distressed, an upholder and defender of the victim of oppression. Let integrity and uprightness distinguish all thine acts. Be a home for the stranger, a balm to the suffering, a tower of strength for the fugitive. Page 285. Say, sow not, O people, the seeds of dissension amongst men, and contend not with your neighbor. Page 296. The purpose underlying the revelation of every heavenly book, nay, of every divinely revealed verse, is to endue all men with righteousness and understanding, so that peace and tranquility may be firmly established amongst them. Page 206. Those virtues that befit his dignity are forbearance, mercy, compassion, and loving kindness towards all the peoples and kindreds of the earth. Page 215. The great being saith, O ye children of men, the fundamental purpose animating the faith of God and his religion is to safeguard the interests and promote the unity of the human race and to foster the spirit of love and fellowship amongst men. Suffer it not to become a source of dissension and discord, of hate and enmity. Page 215. It is incumbent upon them who are in authority to exercise moderation in all things, Whatsoever passeth beyond the limits of moderation will cease to exert a beneficial influence. Consider, for instance, such things as liberty, civilization, and the like. However much men of understanding may favorably regard them, they will, 
if carried to excess, exercise a pernicious influence upon men. Page 216. O contending peoples and kindreds of the earth, set your faces toward unity and let the radiance of its light shine upon you. Gather ye together, and for the sake of God resolve to root out whatever is the source of contention amongst you. Then will the effulgence of the world's great luminary envelop the whole earth, and its inhabitants become the citizens of one city and the occupants of one and the same throne. Page 217. There can be no doubt whatever that the peoples of the world, of whatever race or religion, derive their inspiration from one heavenly source and are the subjects of one God. The difference between the ordinances under which they abide should be attributed to the varying requirements and exigencies of the age in which they were revealed. Page 217 The great being saith, Regard man as a mine rich in gems of inestimable value. Education can, alone, cause it to reveal its treasures and enable mankind to benefit therefrom. Page 260 For the tongue is a smoldering fire, an excess of speech, a deadly poison. Material fire consumeth the body, whereas the fire of the tongue devoureth both heart and soul. The force of the former lasteth but for a time, while the effects of the latter endureth a century. Page 265 That seeker should also regard backbiting as grievous error and keep himself aloof from its dominion inasmuch as backbiting quencheth the light of the heart and extinguisheth the life of the soul. He should be content with little and be freed from all inordinate desire. Page 265 To whatever place we may be banished, however great the tribulation we may suffer, they who are the people of God must, with fixed resolve and perfect confidence, keep their eyes directed toward the day spring of glory, and be busied in whatever may be conducive to the betterment of the world and the education of its people. Page 270 Whoso ariseth among you to teach the cause of his Lord, let him, before all else, teach his own self, that his speech may attract the hearts of them that hear him. Unless he teacheth his own self, the words of his mouth will not influence the heart of the seeker. Page 277 The purpose of the one true God, exalted be his glory, in revealing himself unto men, is to lay bare those gems that lie hidden within the mind of their true and inmost selves. that the diverse communions of the earth and the manifold systems of religious belief should never be allowed to foster the feelings of animosity among men is, in this day, of the essence of the faith of God and his religion. Page 287 A kindly tongue is the lodestone of the hearts of men. It is the bread of the Spirit. It clotheth the words with meaning. It is the fountain 
of the light of wisdom and understanding. Page 289 Consort with all men, O people of Baha, in a spirit of friendliness and fellowship. If he be aware of a certain truth, if he possess a jewel of which others are deprived, Share it with them in a language of utmost kindliness and goodwill. If it be accepted, if it fulfill its purpose, your object is attained. If anyone should refuse it, leave him unto himself and beseech God to guide him. Page 289 Beautify your tongues, O people, with truthfulness, and adorn your souls with the ornament of honesty. Be aware, O people, that ye deal not treacherously with anyone. Be ye the trustees of God amongst his creatures, and the emblems of his generosity amidst his people. They that follow their lusts and corrupt inclinations have erred and dissipated their efforts. They indeed are of the lost. The purpose of the one true God in manifesting himself is to summon all mankind to truthfulness and sincerity, to piety and trustworthiness, to resignation and submissiveness to the will of God, to forbearance and kindliness, to uprightness and wisdom. His object is to array every man with the mantle of a saintly character and to adorn him with the ornament of holy and goodly deeds. Page 299. Blessed are the learned that pride not themselves on their attainments, and well it is with the righteous that mock not the sinful, but rather conceal their misdeeds so that their own shortcomings may remain veiled to men's eyes. Page 315. The civilization, so often vaunted by the learned exponents of arts and sciences, will, if allowed to overleap the bounds of moderation, bring great evil upon men. Page 342 Tablets of Baha'u'llah Defile not your tongues with the cursing and reviling of any soul, and guard your eyes against that which is not seemly. Set forth that which ye possess. Page 129 This wronged one exhorteth the peoples of the world to observe tolerance and righteousness, which are two lights amidst the darkness of the world, and two educators for the edification of mankind. Happy are they who have attained thereto, and woe betide the heedless. Page 36. Concerneth trustworthiness. Verily, it is the door of security for all that dwell on earth, and a token of glory on the part of the All-Merciful. He who partaketh thereof hath indeed partaken of the treasures of wealth and prosperity. Trustworthiness is the greatest portal leading unto the tranquility and security of the people. In truth, the stability of every affair hath depended and doth depend upon it. 
all the domains of power, of grandeur, and of wealth are illumined by its light. Page 37. In this day, the secrets of the earth are laid bare before the eyes of men. The pages of swiftly appearing newspapers are indeed the mirror of the world. They reflect the deeds and pursuits of diverse people and kindreds. They both reflect them and make them known. They are a mirror endowed with hearing, sight, and speech. This is an amazing and potent phenomenon. However, it behooveth the writers thereof to be purged from the promptings of evil passions and desires, and to be attired with the raiment of justice and equity. They should inquire into situations as much as possible and ascertain the facts, then set them down in writing. Page 39 to 40. The word of God, which the supreme pen hath recorded on the seventh leaf of the most exalted paradise, is this. O ye men of wisdom among nations, shut your eyes to estrangement, then fix your gaze upon unity. Cleave tenaciously unto that which will lead to the well-being and tranquility of all mankind. This span of earth is but one homeland and one habitation. It behooveth you to abandon vainglory which causeth alienation and to set your hearts on whatever will ensure harmony. In the estimation of the people of Baha man's glory lieth in his knowledge, his upright conduct, his praiseworthy character, his wisdom, and not in nationality or rank. Page 67 to 68. The Hidden Words of Baha'u'llah. O Son of Spirit, the best beloved of all things in my sight is justice. Turn not away therefrom if thou desirest me, and neglect it not that I may confide in thee. By its aid thou shalt see with thine own eyes, and not through the eyes of others, and shalt know of thine own knowledge and not through the knowledge of thy neighbor. Ponder this in thy heart, how it behooveth thee to be. Verily, justice is my gift to thee, and the sign of my loving kindness. Set it then before thine eyes. Part 1, 2. O son of being, how couldst thou forget thine own faults and busy thyself with the faults of others? Whoso doeth this is accursed of me. Part 1, 26 O son of being, ascribe not to any soul that which thou wouldst not have ascribed to thee and say not that which thou dost not. This is my command unto thee. Do thou observe it. Part 1, 29 O son of man, should prosperity befall thee, rejoice not, and should abasement come upon thee, grieve not, for both shall pass away and be no more. Part 1, 52 
O friend, in the garden of thy heart, plant naught but the rose of love. And from the nightingale of affection and desire, loosen not thy hold. Treasure the companionship of the righteous, and eschew all fellowship with the ungodly. Part 2, 3 O son of dust, verily I say unto thee, Of all men, the most negligent is he that disputeth idly, and seeketh to advance himself over his brother. Say, O brethren, let deeds, not words, be your adorning. Part 2, 5 O son of earth, Know verily the heart wherein the least remnant of envy yet lingers shall never attain my everlasting dominion, nor inhale the sweet savors of holiness breathing from my kingdom of sanctity. Part 2, 6 O my servant, purge thy heart from malice and innocent of envy, enter the divine court of holiness. Part 2, 42 O companion of my throne, hear no evil, and see no evil. Abase not thyself, neither sigh and weep. Speak no evil, that thou mayest not hear it spoken unto thee. And magnify not the faults of others, that thine own faults may not appear great. And wish not the abasement of anyone, that thine own abasement be not exposed. Part 2, 44 O children of desire, Put away the garment of vainglory, and divest yourselves of the attire of haughtiness. Part 2, 47 O brethren, be forbearing one with another, and set not your affections on things below. Pride not yourselves in your glory, and be not ashamed of abasement. Part 2, 48 O quintessence of passion, put away all covetousness, and seek contentment. For the covetous hath ever been deprived, and the contented hath ever been loved and praised. Part 2, 50 Thank you.